We beat to rap what key beat to lock, but I'm cool like that. You're now rocking with the best Luminary Sounds, the, the number one station for independent artists. I'm cool like that. We should go OPEC. back. We met love, at OPEC. Love, uh-huh. love series. Uh-huh. We met at OPEC. That's awesome. Man. And, and, uh, so Anderson Pack is a big fan of OPEC, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and, mm-hmm. so what was that relationship like? Um, so for people that don't know, um, OPEC in 2019 were at Brinks at closing, right? Okay. Um, so OPEC, the, the whole facility um, for the last 50 plus years was um, had a subsidy by the city. Um, they kind of helped pay for it to stay alive. 2019, things got really bad. Um, so we were about to close. So that's when um, I know people from the community, our director, Carolyn, uh, she's like, well, we have to do something. We can't let the pack die. Yes, uh, yes, okay. So that's how you know we got Anderson Pack to um, help us and push what, what was going on to um, you know keep it alive and let people know, hey, we have this thing here that the community needs. Um, so let's let's rock with it. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. So um, is this like a you guys have a big team there? No, well, because it, you guys do a lot of events, obviously, and you guys had the what was it the uh, the kicking it? What was it the, yeah. the the karate something that you guys just had? Yeah, so um, it's called Can I Kick It? So can the, I kick can it? There you go. Can yeah, I kick we did it. see can that. Can I kick, kick it? it? Yeah. So, yes, you can. Uh, l- let me kind of back up so you guys kind of understand okay. how that OPAC works now. So for the last 50, 50 plus years, it was called the PAC, right? One association took care of the theater, took care of all the community center and everything. 2019, almost closed down. We had to figure out how to pivot. How do we keep the community side alive? Right, right. Uh, mm-hmm. So for the people that don't know, we had to bring in an outside company to manage the theater. And they're okay. called really? the Canyon. Yeah. So they handle the theater now. So any big performances that you see, any bookings, that's them. We transition to going from the PAC to OPAC. So OPAC is a nonprofit that works the community side inside of the Oxford Performing Arts Center building. Very confusing. So you work, <laughs> so you work yeah. together? Yes, yes. Okay. They handle that side, and I work for the nonprofit mm. that handles all the That makes sense. Else. Yeah. So our biggest thing is the community center and uh, the rentals, right? So a lot of people, we have venues, people do quinceañeras, weddings, and all this okay, stuff. Okay, I see. I uh, see. Fall in love. Fall in love, yeah. That's, <laughs> that, that's, that's what that love that you talk about. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, you know, with this new organization coming in, is this a permanent thing, or are you guys just using them to get you where you need to be? Right, so um, there will be there to the end of 2025. Okay. Um, it, w- it was a way to stay alive, right? How do we figure this out? Um, how do we keep it going? So they come in and they do their thing. Absolutely. Um, Looks like it's working. Yeah. So that's, you know, they do their thing and I'm on the nonprofit side. I see. So that's okay. where we transition to OPEC. So a lot of people know it as the PAC, but yeah. the nonprofit is OPEC, Oxygen Performing Arts Center. Yeah. There you go. So okay. how long have you been with OPEC and what do you do for yeah. the nonprofit? Yeah. So I've been on board for a month and a half. Yeah, I just got here. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, so, but the cool thing is that I've been working with OPEC for maybe like two years okay. um, as a contracted artist doing uh, uh, classes for like photography and video. Oh, work. okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're not new to this. No, no. All. So so I'm very fortunate that uh, I had a lot of, 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 of I had a lot of opportunities with them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, to do a lot of things with the community and with them. Um, you know, a lot of the artist programs that I've been able to help. Uh, now I jumped on as the events and programs manager. Mm. So now I'm able, I'm able to oversee and help create all these cool events for the community, create all these programs, um, uh, you know, just a lot of cool stuff that, that I'm able to So these out. classes that you're talking about, you'll have a professional come in and teach students, mm-hmm. like how to like do photography. I did see something about DJing at one mm-hmm, point this mm-hmm. time, oh, uh, that's painting, right. things mm-hmm. like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, all our programming is based on serving uh, the youth in the community of Oxnard and the 805, right? Okay. Um, most of our programming, what we do, we contract out professional artists to come in and do usually a six week course. And that could be once or twice a week for uh, the kids in the community. So for example, right now we have um, our visual arts program. Mm-hmm. We have children's art and teen art. So children's art is something that we just started last week. That's cool. To, we're, cool. We're trying to fill it out, right? Real cool. What kind of after school program can we do for kids? that either they don't have in their school or they want to come together somewhere offsite. Mm-hmm. So we hired in a, uh, an artist, Elisa Torres. She's a big artist here in the community. Okay. And she's teaching the children's art program. They okay. come 
we, we split it up in ages, right? Mm -hmm. Cause so we could separate of course. it. So um, different ages come in different times of the week and she goes through everything um, art related. But the biggest thing is that this is an arts and craft, right? You could do arts and craft in school. This mm. is elevated art. Mm. So she's not just here, go ahead and paint. She's talking about color theory. She's talking about, you know, specific shading stuff. So this is elevated yeah. art wow. that you won't get in your traditional you intermediate. Know, yeah. 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 So as far as I know you mentioned the 805. So I know w when we're talking about OPEC, we're talking specifically Oxnard. So how often do we see OPEC go to Camarillo, going to Ojai, going to Ventura and mm -hmm. collab? Yeah, that, that's a really good point because that's something we're looking at now. Okay. okay. Right. Um, we've, we love our community. We want to serve our community um, because there is a difference between people in Oxnard and people in Ventura and people in Camarillo and what they have access to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, we're in the part of Oxnard. We are, it's a lot of underserved people. So that's what we're trying to deal with. Um, but we are thinking about how can we make this a situation of a satellite OPAC site somewhere off site, or how can we, mm -hmm. you know, go off to different schools or different places outside of Oxnard and pull that in. Cause, uh, in reality, the performing arts center is the biggest one in the, in the County. Oh, Oxnard wow. Performing arts wow center. It is. I didn't yeah. know that. So we have, uh, if, if you look at it, we have classrooms, we have courtyards, we have, uh, big rental facilities. We have the theater. So that you have to go to Thousand Oaks for the next theater. I see. Yeah. And so right off the know, freeway. Yeah. So we're trying to really build this team and how you guys were talking about it, how big is the team? Three years ago, it was 20 plus people. Okay. Um, two months ago, the programming side. Right. Four people. Four wow. people. Wow. And now was that, was that because now, of COVID? Yeah, so I mean, budget wow. cuts, COVID, yeah. everything just came down. And you know what's the first thing that suffers when something happens? The arts, the arts right? Yeah. They just mm -hmm. shave that off, whatever. They don't need that. Wow. Um, but now we're building back up. Yeah. So in the last okay. couple of months, we have three more people on staff, including myself. You know, there you we're, go. We're, we're so are you, now you're at seven. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now you it's building. It's yeah. growing. Yeah. Let's go. so our official number is, uh, I believe, 12 or 13. Okay. Um, because we also have, we can't forget about the rental side, right? That's what mm -hmm. keeps us alive. Right. That's the people that are putting together your weddings, your quinceañeras. Uh, mm -hmm. Like yet, last night, we had a Narcor concert. We have Narcor concerts all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So those are the people that are serving that part of the nonprofit. Okay. So it's both right. the community center, the rental side. But we're one big happy family. One big happy family. Yeah. So how can people get involved if they want to, you know, be on with OPAC and they want to work for OPAC? What can they do? Is there like a website that they mm -hmm. can go to and fill an application or yeah so because we are a nonprofit, it's i wish i could just say everyone just apply and we'll just hire everyone um <laughs> but we did lose the subsidy from the city right mm -hmm. so now we're self-sustained so now that's the biggest difference from the past 50 years mm -hmm. before the community doesn't know that before the city you know gave us x amount of money to stay alive wow. but now mm -hmm. it's up to us to mm -hmm. write grants to do fundraising to ask so for you gotta sponsorships go, yeah. oh yeah man. and that's a big difference People it's aren't, huge. People aren't used to like, oh, OPEC is asking for sponsors. Like, that's weird. That has never They're happened. Like, why are they doing that? Well, yeah. I saw on your Instagram page, on the OPEC's Instagram page, that you're looking for volunteers. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm someone that likes to do things that are hard, right? Kay. So, as soon as I jumped in, I was like, hey, let's try to bring all this stuff back. So, we have someone uh, that just jumped on board. Her name's Samantha, and she's going to be dealing with volunteers. And I told her, I was like, hey, let's get this program up and going because we have a lot of opportunities. But people don't know that you could come and volunteer. You know, we have a lot of <laughs> events, we have a lot of things, but mm -hmm. and we want volunteers. But if you don't tell people that it's a possibility, then they don't come. Absolutely, um, and that's on us, right? That's on yep. us to and, get the word out. And what is your marketing strategy right now? Since you you revamping, like yes. the, the website we have it here, it looks great. Yeah, you no, know, it looks good. Yeah, so Marlene, she's our social media person. Mm -hmm. She's really, you know, she's great on social that. media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's great. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know if you guys have realized on our Instagram, I'm really big on putting faces on people and faces on segments, right? Yeah. So, um, like Samantha, you just saw her on mm -hmm. her. I was I like, did. hey, people need to know that you're the face of the volunteers. Yeah, she yeah. does special development as well. Mm. Um, our mm. arts program, I'm like, hey, you're the teen art coordinator. Let people know that this is who they're gonna come and see. I see. So my big strategy is, we're real people. You know, right? Well, we're real people. This is how they we should look see us. like. Yeah, like I want people to walk in and be like, "Oh, yeah, like I know who you are. Like that's you." Um, you know, Samantha, that's you. Cool. Well, what what has you passionate about OPAC? What made you want to join? Jump from out of art. everything that you've done. You're like, yeah. you know what? This is where I need to be. Right. Jump yeah. from artist to on the payroll. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm very. She might not want me to say this, but I'm very thankful for our coordinator. Right. 
She has given me um, Carolyn. She has given me a lot of opportunities before I jumped on board. Uh, she has trusted me and believed in my vision as an artist to do stuff. Um, the last thing I did before I got hired on, um, I taught a six week course that turned into two months because of COVID uh, for foster boys to learn about photography. Mm. So I was going over wow. to, the, to the foster homes and teaching them, hey, you know, this is a escape. This is an art escape for, for whatever you're going through. This could potentially be a, uh, you know, your job. You could do this for money. Mm. And we have a installation next to the transit center where you guys could go. One of the light boxes is wrapped with all their photography wow. and other stuff. Um, so it's all in the community. So after I did that, I was like, okay, cool. Then I got a regular job, right? As an <laughs> artist, it killed me. I was working at a paper plant. You okay. Know? I was like working at a paper plant, 12 hour <laughs> shifts. Like, and I was like, oh. This this is not this, this is like, this is a lit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like you all walk in with your little lunch bag at the same time, you all clock out at the same time. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, it's it, killing me. Yeah, this isn't it. So I was in a crossroads. I was like, either next month I'm quitting and getting out of Oxnard, or I'm do something else. And I saw that OPEC put this position and I was like, Wow, like events and programs, like that's intense. Yeah. I was like, I wonder if I could do it. So I applied and I told myself, if they say no, I'm gone. Like, really? Like, oh, man. So you were job. out of there. Yeah, like I'm quitting my job and I, I'm leaving. And I'm so while riding you, when you on that you interview. To, when you said you were going to leave, you were going to go where? Where are you going? The Bahamas? So, I wish. <laughs> no, you know, um, as a photographer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So as a photographer, um, I think you follow the industry. Mm -hmm. And um, so obviously like everyone, and this is the unfortunate part, but it just mm -hmm. is what it is, right? So I was going to go to LA. And then, uh, then I was like, mm, where else is there industry? I was like, oh, you know what? Let me go to San Diego. San Diego is kind of cool. Like, you know, San Diego's it's cool, LA, yeah. Oxnard mixed together. Yeah. Time, well, I was so. going to get extreme and be like New York. Shout out to Flemings. You know, yeah. yeah. I just don't think I could afford New York. Yeah. But um, anyway, so she called me. She's like, hey, like, it's yours if you want it. And I was like, this is go. Carolyn. Carolyn. Carolyn yeah. Mullen, the director. Mullen, the director yes. of the Oxnard Performing Arts okay. Center. Okay. Um, and I was like, okay, I guess that's what I'm doing. So wow. I quit mm -hmm. my job and then. I started there a month and a half ago. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Six weeks ago, he would have been out there in San Diego. Yeah. But now, you know, it's nice, though. It's nice to be back home and I will stay here and now in a different position, right? Now I could bring programming right. to the community. I could do events. I could uh, have opportunities for people. Uh, one of the biggest things I think y you all could agree with this when you're starting off, having a place to do things is the hardest thing. Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. I remember using my friends. Uh, they were like painting the room. And I was like, hey, before you put your furniture in there, let me do a photo shoot in there. You know, uh, my backyard, <laughs> I would put stuff up, you know, in, in my in my living room, I would. Yeah. So my photography has a lot to do with like paint and water and like messy things. Um, so I would like cover things with plastic. And I was like, hey, dude, hold on, like, let me do a photo shoot. In there. I'm like visualizing two people holding a couch. Like, <laughs> yeah, stop playing around. But, well, we did that the other yeah. day. We took the couch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very similar. So now that i'm here it's like we have rooms for creative process that's mm. awesome we have space so i want the community to know like hey if you're creative mm -hmm. like you know hit me up we can work something out we're working on creating a podcasting room we're working on creating an, a photography room like that's all cool. this stuff yeah. and make it very inexpensive for people to come and create and do whatever they need to do and you don't have to leave you know I heard that. It's here. Well, speaking of creative, you know, we have you here and we have a lot of games that we're going to get into. So you can let your hair down and really play. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and uh, so we're going to get right into uh, our Francois facts. That's Ready? fine. Let's go.